stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. 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 Thank night meeting. We have one of these once a month. And uh, we have a relatively short uh, agenda tonight, so that's good. Uh, we'll start with announcements. The Stormwater Advisory Board. Laura. Um, the Stormwater Advisory Board is accepting applications. Um, we, have an, uh, we need one appointment to complete the term of Andy Vasquez. Uh, he was uh, elected by caucus to take Mike Jessen's seat on the county council. Um, the, the applicant needs to reside in unincorporated Porter County, and the deadline will be May 18th for an appointment on May 22nd. Can you all hear back there? No. no. Maybe I'm not sitting close enough. Yeah, we're, we're in the process of, uh, of uh, totally replacing this entire audio system, so... You're, you're more than happy to sit in, your, in one of these pews or one of these chairs if you, you want to get up closer. And Jim, you don't hear it. I could be sitting next to you and you don't hear me, so it <laughs> doesn't matter. Uh, commissioners, we got a proclamation in support of gratitude for all the public service agencies who went above and beyond during the storm on Friday, March 31st. Barb, you want to? Yes. Well, I had personal experience of our first responders on March 31st. Our house got struck by lightning in two different places and we had a fire that started in two different places. I definitely have an appreciation for our first responders and four different fire uh, department agencies uh, appeared and were there for like five hours or so and I can't tell you how much I recognize some of you from that evening and I can't tell you how much I appreciate all of you and I'd like to just re read this proclamation right now on behalf of all of the commissioners. Whereas the Porter County Board of Commissioners wishes to honor the first responders of Porter County who worked during the inclement weather that occurred on March 31st, 2023. Whereas the honorable tenants of the Porter County Public Safety first responders, dedication, teamwork, compassion, and integrity were displayed during a high call volume, high intensity weather related event. Whereas 300 emergency calls were answered, dispatched, and serviced between these, the hours of 8 p.m. and midnight, averaging 1.25 calls per minute. Whereas three structure fire calls, 31 roadway obstruction calls, 34 trees down calls, and 15 traffic accident calls with varying degrees of property damage and personal injury were dispatched during aforementioned four-hour period. Whereas the public safety agencies responsible for assisting the citizens of Porter County are as follows. Porter County Central Communications, Porter County Sheriff's Department, Portage Police Department, Valparaiso Police Department, Coutts Police Department, Hebron Police Department, Ogden Dunes Police Department, Burns Harbor Police Department, Beverly Shores Police Department, Chesterton Police Department, Porter County Animal Shelter, Northwest Health EMS, Valparaiso Fire Department, Portage Fire Department, Beverly Shores Fire Department, Boone Grove Fire Department, Burns Harbor Fire Department, Chesterton Fire Department, Hebron Fire Department, Coutts Fire Department, Lake of the Four Seasons Fire Department, Liberty Fire Department, Morgan Fire Department, Ogden Dunes Fire Department, Pines Fire Department, Porter Fire Department, South Haven Fire Department, Union Fire Department, Washington Fire Department, Westville Fire Department, Porter County Highway, Valparaiso Street Department, and Portage Street Department. Now therefore, the Porter County Board of Commissioners comprised of Commissioner Laura Blaney, District 1 South, Commissioner Barb Regnitz, District 2 Center, and Commissioner Jim Biggs, District 3 North, hereby recognizes those first responders who worked during the inclement weather on March 31st, 2023, for their dedication, 
teamwork, compassion, and integrity displayed to the citizens and fellow public safety responders of Porter County. It is with great honor and appreciation that we acknowledge their service on this 24th day of April, 2023. And I don't know, for those of you who are present, if you'd like to come up and receive one of a, a copy of this proclamation, I'd like to shake your hand also. I would just like to uh, finish this real quick here in that, you know, it's it's events like we we uh, experienced um, earlier this month that really give you a, a better or a greater appreciation for what first responders really do. I mean, I, you know, looking out my front window or my door when all that was going on, I couldn't can imagine being out in the middle of all that. But that's what you all get paid for and you get trained for and just wanted you to know that there are people out there, most of us, we appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, next up, commissioners, we have an ordinance creating a non-reverting fund, uh, number 4933 for Porter County Community Foundation, Porter County Historical Site Preservation Fund, second reading. I entertain a motion. This is the second reading. I move to approve uh, the, the ordinance creating a non-reverting fund for Porter County Community Foundation, Porter County Historical Site Preservation Fund, second reading. A second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Aye. Motion approved. Uh, we have a, a resolution for uh, Commissioner uh, Barb Regnus temporary living arrangements. Uh, Scott? Yeah, as alluded to earlier, uh, Commissioner Regnus' home was uh, hit by lightning and made unlivable so that uh, she is no, not going to be living in her normal residence but uh, this resolution uh, memorializes that that relocation is temporary and due to a natural disaster and she intends on returning to her uh, former residence as soon as it's completed. So you're not moving to Florida or someplace like that? No. <laughs> okay, just be outside your residence. Currently you are in your, your district Mm -hmm. Temporarily, mm -hmm. but you're you're looking uh, for a year or so. You're going to be uh, like a mile and a half outside yeah. the district. Right. Okay, mm -hmm. still know where to, to find. It. Uh, second, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, same sign. Motion approved. Um, opioid uh, opioid uh, funds discussion. Yes. Are, well, I was hoping that we were going to have our meeting on may 9th so that we could bring uh, those recipients that uh, we were hoping to have them make a presentation so we'll just have to postpone that um, councilman greg sims and i have had three public meetings and have had several of the agencies that are looking for uh, assistance in some way either in prevention or in recovering in recovery from um, drug addiction opioid addiction 
Um, and we have pretty much narrowed it down. We've also been visiting several of those locations, have had phone conversations with a number of these agencies, and we will just have to postpone uh, bringing them in. And then after we have done that, we're hoping that we'll get that on the uh, council agenda uh, for approval. Okay. Just to recap, we are hoping to spend $160,000 per year. 100000 of that has already been committed to our new pro coordinator in the Sheriff's Department. And every year we are looking to uh, provide grants up to $60,000 for several of these agencies. Now when we get to it, when, when you and Councilman Sims gets to a point to where you're comfortable with uh, what might be proposed, that'll be brought up in front of the commissioners. Yes, and the commissioners yes. will then formally send it off to the, the county yes. council for approval. Yes. Okay. We were hoping that at the May 9th meeting <coughs> that we could have them just give a presentation and then have a couple of weeks of you know any interactions, any in, uh, input that we could get from either the council or the commissioners. And then on the 22nd, we were going to have a resolution, but we'll just have to push back on that. Well, I appreciate all the hard work and time you put into this because it's not easy. Anytime you want to give somebody finds out you have money to to spend, they it's uh, it's not it's just not easy. Um, we have the health and wellness initiative. Uh, POCO Wellness Connection discussion. Can we have everybody that's speaking coming and sit up in front here? Hello. I know at one of our early admin meetings I had mentioned that we were hoping to launch this health and wellness initiative task force. And what is really cool about this, and we don't have everybody here today, but we have a multidisciplinary uh, group of people who are interested in making health and wellness available in, in the county. And we decided to, to launch this internally for the Porter County government employees just to have them be our guinea pigs. And, uh, but this has been, <laughs> this has been, um, just a really fun endeavor because we have people from so many different agencies who have had so many different creative ideas. And I would, can I just uh, say one person who couldn't be here, I'll just read his and then I'll let all of you take a turn, okay? So Kevin Pazer, he's part of our group as well. And health and wellness doesn't necessarily have to be you running a marathon. It can be just getting out social wellness, emotional wellness, physical wellness. And so one of our first things was kind of like, before we even did our official launch tonight, and by the way, this is our official launch. Do you have a, oh yes, can you see our, our logo? That's our logo, and we really want to thank the health department for uh, their creativity in, in coming up with our Poco Wellness Connection logo. Um, so we didn't even have the logo fully defined, but uh, we decided to have this as one of our, our first initiatives. And Kevin can't make it here this evening, but he did a, a fire history guided walking tour on Saturday. I don't know how many of you were able to make it. Uh, he had 32 participants and two dogs, some of which were Porter County employees. And he made sure to plug the Poco Wellness Connection and share that they were a guinea pig event. Uh, the weather, weather is crummy, but the entire group stuck it for an hour and then visited the museum afterwards. And retired Valparaiso Fire Chief Phil Griffith attended the tour and shared some fascinating information about the Lowenstein department store fire with the group. Everyone really enjoyed the history he shared. Now, of course, he had to do a fire tour. <laughs> the one thing we were talking about today. but So that's really cool. And we did broadcast that out to the uh, Porter County employees in a general announcement encouraging them to participate. But I'm so excited to have everybody speak and, and to talk about some of our initial efforts that we're going to be launching after today. Uh, I'll start things off. Um, <clears throat> so as Barb said, this was kind of, you know, her initiative and her idea to bring us all together, which I think all of us are in agreement that it has been terrific and a great opportunity to just work together and find out where we're similar and, and where we can help build together a good community for our employees, um, for health wellness, and then eventually broader to the whole community. Um, 
Annetta copied down this for me to say, wellness is the act of practicing healthy habits to achieve physical, mental, and social well-being and connection, connecting a network of individuals who are focused on promoting physical, mental, and social health and well-being. And I think that is really just our goal with this group. Um, I would say, she's already talked a lot about how we brought all these different groups together, um, and eventually it is to roll it out to the whole community. As far as the health department, we are offering um, employees help to quit smoking. That's a program we're offering to the whole community as well. Um, also, we will offer regular blood pressure checks to any employees. Just stop by our office and we'll help keep track of that with you and, and monitor that with you and provide any guidance. Um, we're starting an employee walking club and we've mapped out some different walking routes within downtown and up in North Complex and even out at the expo for animal control and the expo staff um, to walk. And then we are also putting together the wellness newsletter that really everybody's contributing to and providing articles and that will go out to the employees. You want to tell them what you're doing? Yeah. So I can kind of jump in here. Uh, so being in... In parks and outdoor recreation, we have uh, a unique infrastructure where we can have the programming, recreation, physical. Just to, they don't move. Oh, I'll, get to. I'll get closer to the, the mic. There we go. Uh, so we have the, the unique infrastructure to bring in the physical wellness portion of the program. So we have, we have trails. We have the fields. We have the experience and the expertise in building programs, building these types of recreational activities, and as well as working with uh, Daniel and facilities and finding out how we can bring some of that to the other buildings in, in Porter County. Uh, namely, we're going to start with the government building here and try to figure out ways that we can use the extra areas and the common areas to bring in sort of league activities, sports activities, and things that people can do either before work, uh, on lunch breaks, on, on active breaks, or even after work uh, in terms of like leagues and, and just general uh, easier access to outdoor activities that otherwise they may not, may not have. So you want to talk about a couple of the ideas we had for our courtyard here? Yeah, so some of the ones we've got uh, brainstorming now uh, based on the survey that we took. Uh, one of the big ones is volleyball. Uh, so we're going to try to find a way to set up volleyball. Uh, we've talked about tetherball, setting up tetherball. Uh, cornhole, uh, bags, things that are readily and easily available to install, get set up, and then can be played in a short 30-minute interval or 15-minute interval or, or before and after, after work in a league format where people can get together. And they're important not just for the physical aspect, but they also bring important uh, social wellness uh, as well. That's where we're kind of starting now. Well, thank you. Can we have two more people from the team come up and? Hi. Hi. Go ahead and go. OK. Um, well, I just like to say this has been a lot of fun. I really didn't know what to expect when Barb asked me to do this. Um, I do not work in county government, so I'm not representing a department, but I was asked as a, um, to be a representative, a citizen representative, to give maybe a, a different perspective than what the departments would, would be able to do. And so it's been a great experience. It's been really fun watching the departments work together, the ones that have been a part of it thus far. It's amazing to see the collaboration between them. I think that's one of the things that we've, really enjoyed is is to see that is that they you know all these different departments now can communicate and work on something in, in a positive light um, besides the things that may come out of this task force this con wellness connection that might be kind of newer things that w we're also promoting things that the part departments are already doing like within the library system well I think Willow is here she'll share things um, like Barb said, the, with the museum, the walks that, that happen or anything, that, any type of programs go on the museum. And um, there's programs within the health department, the smoking cessation part. There's things that are going on all the time in the county that people may not be aware of. So this is a really good platform to put those things out there and, and to make people aware of it. So it's just been really exciting. Um, one of the things I just wanted to share with you is kind of the philosophy of um, 
how we came about with the the logo and the, the motto to choose health for life is because we really want to encourage people um, and meet them where they're at. So it's not like something where, you know, some people may not be mobile at all or they may not be active at all. And this might be a way for them to just move a little bit further into, into you know, even if it's just like a, a social type of, of communication or con connected is. So we have the, the motto, choose health for life, and that's where we came up with that. And then if you look at the, the tree with the people under it, um, we really want to promote, um, and, and with, you know, with our parks department, we have such a great, um, you know, park system. We want to promote that, you know, um, the con connectivity, not just with people, but with nature, because that's obviously really a positive thing. So, yeah, I appreciate you asking me to do this. It's been a great opportunity to, to see what goes on in the county government in a positive light. So it's been fun. Thank yeah. you. Thank you very much. Thanks for listening. For <clears throat> so the extension office is grounded in agriculture. So food is our business. So what I brought for you today is a little bit of a sample of some things. So these are brownies, and they're healthy brownies. They don't have sugar. They have a sugar substitute. And... Then they have a surprise ingredient, so but you need brownies, to taste it. It's brownies without sugar. Yes. And it's like then, sucking on a rock. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe Which natural sugar. Let yeah. me see. So anyway, what we plan Thank to you. do are bring a couple of things of to the table <laughs> with this. Um, <laughs> the uh, Extension Office has our Ag Natural Resources and our Master Gardener. This is a, a, a brownie muffin mm. with um, out. Oh, any kind of flour. Okay. So it's fruits, it's pecans. <laughs> if you have a nut allergy, you may not want to try that. Thank you. Um, it's apples, bananas. Is there any police or <laughs> fire department still in the office? <laughs> EMTs, just, just in case. Here. All right. So anyway, so the Extension Office, our Ag Natural Resources person, so. um, is available, and we partner with the Master Gardeners to do programs on um, all things growing food. So our Master Gardeners um, doing programs on growing tomatoes in a bucket. We're going to start with container gardening right now, but um, we also um, will help with any kinds of community gardens. We talked about doing a community garden out in the parks um, as well. So um, that's one of the resources. And then as a health and human sciences educator, um, I've worked with Christy before at um, a community uh, health Partner system. 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 Okay, <laughs> healthcare systems. And so um, Christy and I are going to work on way of programs that will help us be healthy for life. And it's kind of based on the Mediterranean diet. But in doing that, we really want to show tips and techniques that will help you to incorporate healthy eating into your life. So we've got little um, techniques that we want to use. So did anybody taste this brownie? Nobody's done. <laughs> <laughs> I ate mine. I ate mine. It was delicious. Okay, it's very fudgy, but I have to tell you, our mm -hmm. secret ingredients, instead of putting the oil, eggs, and water into your um, brownies. You take a can of black beans, drain it, add water, mix it, and then you um, use those with a regular brownie mix. This happened to be a sugar-free brownie mix. So anyway, so that's really what we plan to do. We'll be doing starting um, in May. We are have um, planned Wellness Wednesdays out at the park at 10 o'clock. We have a tasting at the library planned where we'll try to sample these foods and <laughs> others. And then, um, you know, we'll just continue to add recipes to the uh, newsletter as well as do um, additional classes. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you for you. taking the time to do that. Yes. It's very nice. And anybody in here can sample these. I'll have them over here. <laughs> do the two of you want to go and then we'll have Lisa and, and Tim go? Go ahead, Tim. Oh, okay. I'll go. Um, I'm Willow. I have the pleasure of working at the Porter County Library, and we are just really happy to be a part of this committee. Um, and our job is to connect people to things that make their life better. So it's a really good fit, whether we're hosting or whether we're marketing something that the government is already doing. Um, we're just super excited to be a part of the team. I, I like your approach. You turn around, you yeah. dressed it, you didn't need a microphone. <laughs> right. You set a precedent. You know. Beautiful. <laughs> Be a tough act to follow, Lee. I don't, know. I don't know how somebody with a body like mine ended up on this committee. <laughs> <laughs> but Mr. Rankins just asked if I would, um, if my department would provide a website for this initiative, so that they didn't have to spend yeah. any money. And I said, yes. <laughs> 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 I'll do it. Encourage.
Kurt, did you want to mention what, because Kurt's actually part of our committee as well. It's just to put the, push the information out to the employees and then to the public at large. When mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then Lisa and Tim, you want to come up? And I'll just stand up too. Okay. Um, I'm Tim, I'm with Franciscan. We were brought in, um, and it was just by coincidence when, when I met Barb uh, through a report from the Healthy Access program that you're already uh, doing with us. And so with that, um, I think we'll help bring some things to the wellness committee that you already have available through the Healthy Access program that you're doing. Um, so one of the big things I think that we're going to be able to bring to the table is as part of the Healthy Access program, all your employees already have access to the portal. We give them access to a, uh, a wellness portal that we have, and we're going to be able to track all these. So we can put points to all these great things that the committee is doing, um, add some things, you know, like yoga. You know, one of the things that our Healthy Access program offers to your employees already is yoga, and you do have quite a bit of participation. Um, employees taking part of that. But we'll be able to put points to that and track it in the system. Also, uh, I think another huge benefit is we're already doing, you know, uh, on-site wellness uh, event every year for biometric screenings, for blood draws. Uh, all that information is put up into the uh, portal, but we can associate points with that. And if we decide, if the committee decides some kind of an incentive program to go along with the points, then um, you know, I think that that could help increase engagement. You know, we already have a, a, a good participation, but I think this is going to help. And then we can also get um, the clinic providers involved somehow through this with the wellness. And so I think there's going to be some things that you already have now by creating this wellness committee that we're going to be able to extend through the healthy access that you already, already had provided that we just now need to Good. enact. So. Well, what's going to be cool is we're going to be able to create leaderboards and have competitions. And so it'll be cool from the employee perspective. And we'll have to figure out if we roll this out community-wide, how we're going to be able to replicate that at a community level. But um, it's going to bring employees to healthy access as well. So if we're doing things you know, if you're involved in the volleyball league and the only way you can track it is through this portal, well, then you can't help but maybe see a couple other things that are in the healthy access portal, and you might be intrigued to explore that a little bit more. So I think that's just a great win-win where we get to use something that we already have, and we get to amplify that as well as take advantage of some of the fun features and incorporate that with our, with our task force initiative. So... Thank you so much, Tim, for being here. Really appreciate it. And Lisa, not, not last, yeah. not least, yeah. last but not least. Hello, good evening, everybody. I am Lisa Kiger. I'm Director of Business Development with St. Mary Medical Center and Community Healthcare Systems. And I can't tell you, thank you, Barb and commissioners, for having us here this evening. I'm, I'm pulling the tail end together because, as you've heard this evening, um, we are all working together. I've been in medicine for 35 years of my career. I've done not only nationwide, but international, and I'm a resident of Porter County. So coming here with this great team, I have never worked in this type of environment as collaborative. And I think that's the thing I really want to pull. I'm kind of coming in a little bit from the outside, Tim and I have discussed this. We are partners, you know, even though we work with different healthcare systems, we are coming together not only as Porter County government employees, as healthcare providers, but it's truly about reaching not only the, the government employees, but hopefully to expand this to those county residents here. You know, we are all so busy with our jobs and our responsibilities, and oftentimes we silo and we just get focused. But I love with Barb's vision that she was able to pull really key stakeholders within our communities, some really creative people in all of our departments and the companies we work for, thought leaders to come with ideas because we have all these great technologies out right now to help us, but we see that the health of not only Porter County and Indiana, but our nation is not getting better. And so through some of our resources, I think the ideas that we have, we want to start small first with the Porter County government employees, and then take these ideas out to our residents, because it's through these grassroots levels that our, our programs can really impact people. And just like I said, like Annette, I love her ideas with cooking, uh, we find that 75% of it is really what you eat, 25% is then your, your movement, and we really want to meet people where they're at. So if, and it's not financially dependent, we heard about some tomatoes in a bucket. 
folks who live in apartments can access these programs. People who may not be mobile will be able to access. So our team is really taking a look at that broad geography of folks that live in Porter County, who work with Porter County government, and we really want to get creative as far as the ideas that we have so that we can bring these forward. So it's not as separate healthcare systems, it's not as separate you know, departments with the government. We, Holly has been on, on our team giving us feedback too, just from somebody who lives here in Porter County. So it's bringing all this together. And I know Annette mentioned, we have our healthcare system is very involved here in Porter County. We have outreach nurses, and that is our key. It's really about touching people where they're at in their life process. It's a very confusing healthcare community. So it's to meet those folks, explain in a very simple format, and then help them take those little steps. And that's exactly what this group is doing. So I'm very thankful that you invited us. I think it's a great day for Porter County. We've got the POCO Wellness Connection, and really today's our kickoff day. So look forward to more. This is just the start. So Barb, thank you for the thank idea. Thank you so much, everyone. Really, really appreciate all your innovation, ideas, yes. and caring. Thank you. Thank so, you. So 25, you said 75% is what you eat, and 25% is movement? A lot of it is what we're eating. Yeah. yeah. Our foods, processed foods versus natural foods. I'm in trouble. Overeating. Well, we all are. You're not alone. You're not alone. You can't out-exercise your diet. <laughs> yes. Yes. That's depressing. <laughs> Okay, I think we covered everybody here. Well, thank you all thank uh, you very, so much. very, very much. Thank you. Uh, the RBI Group LLC consulting contract for the Porter County Public Safety Commission not to exceed $5,000. Uh, what this is is uh, we put together a public safety commission to, um, to uh, investigate, to to gather information about what's going on public safety wise, county wide, and every aspect of pu public safety. And when I when I talk about public safety, I'm talking about I'm talking about uh, fire, police, of course, ambulance, uh, paramedics, what's in the prosecutor's office, the the jail, and um, nine one one. And nine one one, of well, of course, nine one one, and. Uh, but it, it, in order for us to do that, we we need we needed somebody who who could devote the time during the day uh, temporarily to gather, help gather this information and put it into a, a, um, a report form to hand out to, uh, to the public once we're finished. And, um, and we, uh, not to exceed $5,000, uh, we have somebody that we're, we're speaking to now that with a, a public safety, long public safety distinguished background. Um, and we'll announce that at a later later date. But what what we need now is is uh, to approve or vote on the RI, RBI Group LLC consulting contract itself. I'll entertain a motion. I move. Oh, go ahead. No, you can go ahead. I move that we approve the consulting contract for RBI Group for the Porter County Public Safety Commission, not to exceed Second. five thousand. Second. Uh, although uh, we have a motion and a second all those in favor say aye aye, aye. those of opposed uh, same sign motion approves we're actually hoping that we can have uh, our consultant come to a commissioner's meeting and present the findings as well as uh, where we are with the public safety commission at an upcoming meeting and we, and we you know we already are we've we've met several times up to, up to, to date and and it's nearly every time we meet we learn something new that you know, and I've been in government a long time, and uh, you know, I, uh, Barb, uh, who attends the meetings as well, uh, keeps her ear to the ground, and it's just some of the stuff that I. As a matter of fact, my master's is in public safety administration, and there's stuff that I'm learning through these meetings that I I wasn't aware of before, and I think the public is really going to be appreciative once we get all this in a report form, and, and if nothing comes out of this, we're going to understand why we do what we do. And we're going to understand if what we do, if there's a better way of doing it, um, and and uh, and the public is going to have a better understanding of what uh, what constitutes the entire public safety system, what props it up here in our county. So, all righty, uh, facilities. Uh, Daniel uh, Sullivan. He's Dan, uh, Mr. Sullivan's not <coughs> here today. 
Are we request? Did we want to have um, Scott? Scott, this yeah. One? Scott, you want to? Yeah, this is the re-request for the RFP requirements for the architectural design professional. Looking for uh, this would be to help expand the health department here in the administration building. This would be looking for qualified firms for architectural design and bidding management with an alternative to construction management. It would be uh, we advertised. The sealed proposals would be due uh, by Monday, June 12th at 4:30. There will be a scheduled project walkthrough held uh, 10 a.m. on Thursday, May 11th, before those uh, proposals are due. Um, and this will be out in the paper. We just need the commissioners to approve the uh, specs as presented. Okay. Do we need a, a motion? Yes. Okay. I'll entertain a motion. I move that we approve the RFP requirements for architectural design profesh, uh, professionals to support the facilities director in expanding the health departments. Do we have Maybe. a second? Second. We have a motion and a second to approve a uh, request for RFP requirements for architectural designs uh, and professional services. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion approved. Uh, just one other matter, it's not on the agenda, but. I had uh, spoke to the other two commissioners about getting security in our building full time. And, um, well, over the years, I think uh, I think the, the last two or three commissioners, we uh, they they wanted to do the same thing, but it's always been an issue of finding necessary funds to in order to accomplish that. And um, had a conversation with uh, newly elected uh, um, Sheriff Ballin. And he actually come up with uh, with a uh, process where we're be, we're going to be able to do that to put uh, uh, a police officer in this building, a sheriff's officer, uh, during working hours. And I just wanted to thank you for for making that effort. Okay, uh, we have any other matter anybody wants to come before us? And yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Um, my name is Natalie Morris Cole, and I live at 279 South, 150 East in Morgan Township with my husband. Okay, I'm here because I have some questions and concerns about the Malden Solar LLC project. Um, we were at the meeting at the Porter County Fairgrounds where there was, this project was discussed and had over 400 citizens present. Um, afterward, a petition was circulated and we received over 2,000 signatures and over 400 signs have been placed in residence yard voicing disapproval of this project. Okay, a few days after the meeting I called all take, three. Take your time. You're okay. doing great. <laughs> nervous. You need to be nervous. I'm nervous. Um, a few days after the meeting I called all of your offices and I talked with two of you and a third had a representative respond to my call. So I've talked to all of your offices. And my concern was where the physical solar field was going to be built and the noise of the solar panels and the disruption to our way of life. I was um, told by all three that no application had been presented by NextEra so far and no information was available to where the field would be placed. Okay, also in my discussion with Commissioner Biggs, I voiced my concern and disapproval of the project. And he told me that I need not be concerned until he was concerned. Which put me at ease, thank you. Because the commissioners would not be approving street use permit that is required for an application like this one. Okay, now it seems like the commissioners are reversing their sentiment. Recently, we have been made aware of the fact that NextEra has submitted an application on April 4th, 2023 to the Department of Development and Stormwater Management and a plan set showing construction submitted on April 12th, 2023, which by the way is right across the street from our home. 
a letter on letterhead from the Department of Development and Stormwater Management, Porter County, Indiana, dated April 20th, 2023, states in part, quote, as of the date of this notice, the Malden Solar LLC submittal is being reviewed by department staff and has been deemed a complete an incomplete application. Once staff has completed the review of the documents dated above, there could be additional material requested by Malden Solar LLC. If additional material is requested, new plan sets will be submitted to the office, making the original submitted plans obsolete. Okay, my opinion, it seems that Nextera has hurriedly submitted their incomplete proposal to possibly get in under the wire of the old eliminated United Development Ordinance. On April 11th, 2023, my husband and I attended a commissioner's meeting where the United Development Ordinance was eliminated after the plan commission review and a new ordinance is being reviewed and revisions made to be voted on in the future. Okay, so because of this, it is my understanding that right now there is no ordinance in place. My question is, why is the incomplete application being reviewed and considered? Since it is incomplete, you could have done nothing. If and when Nextera submits a completed application, in my opinion, it should be reviewed and considered with the new United Development Ordinance when it is completed and voted on. So I want to That's thank your question? You. Well, my question is why is the application, if it's incomplete, why is it even being considered? Okay, let, let me just, well, first we're gonna start, when we, when we spoke, Next era had not submitted an application. Correct. Okay. And when we spoke, I told you I had no intentions of signing a road agreement. Correct. And I'm and I don't. Okay? That's okay. when I told you I'll let you know when you need to worry. Yes, you okay? did. Okay? Yes. Why we have to I'm gonna turn it over to Scott now, why we have to consider their application under the old the old the original ordinance. Okay. Scott? <laughs> No, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> okay. Well, because they had gone out, because my no, understanding well, is... We need to be careful on what we're saying at these meetings. The application, anyone that submits an application, it gets reviewed. If I read your letter, my, my, my guess is that you asked for a copy of the application, correct? Correct. Okay. So the letter you signed, I approved which was only meant to let the citizens know that if you came up and got a copy, which is everyone's right, to that application, through this process that we must go through, that there may be plans changing or being modified. So we just wanted everyone to know that on the day you received your public access request, that file may be changing. So that is what that means. It's an incomplete application is a term of art for the planning department that means and it has to do with state statutes kicking in on when they must go to plan commission when an application is deemed completed that means the department believes that it is meeting all of the requirements of the code therefore it puts it on a timing that it must go to the plan commission for consideration when an application is first dropped off to the department it is incomplete until it's reviewed and it stays in that, sta in that standing until the department and all the different um, parts of that department, stormwater, planning, et cetera, have had an opportunity to review and make sure that's a completed application. Anyone can come in and ask for rezones, use variances, and those applications must be considered as due process, and then those boards have to be able to make their decision. So. Um, that is why the information you received as far as it may be changing or it's an incomplete application. At this point in time, we have not requested any additional information from Nextera. We have not made a determination that it's incomplete. It's incomplete upon them turning it in until we say it's complete. 
So it's not as if it comes in, there's a determination that it's incomplete, now go fix it and it becomes complete. It shows up from the moment they file it's incomplete until the department has had an opportunity to review it all to deem it complete for it to move on through the process. All right. If it doesn't have a road agreement, is it incomplete? No, because it has to be, we're talking about stormwater and planning. It has to have a road agreement and a, and a, letter, a letter of credit and guarantee and for order to have building permits to be issued. Okay, does it have that? We, no, because we haven't deemed the application complete, hasn't gone through the process. Okay, and so is it being um, judged or reviewed based on the original ordinance? It is. Okay, so if you have to have more information, will that mean that it would be reviewed under the new ordinance? No. Okay. Well, I'm just here to thank you for your time. You're welcome. I'm concerned. I'm going to be looking at solar fields for the rest of my life. And I'm concerned about that. And I think there's a lot of people concerned. But thank you for listening to me. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else like to speak? Okay. Well, thank you very much and have a nice evening. Recess.